Goss Town, where Beverly's been waiting. Hi, Beverly. Go ahead. You're on exchange. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, morning, Beverly. Good morning. Um, I um, am hearing you loud and clear on your compassionate conservatism and also being pro-life. And um, I worked for a person's candidacy years ago who was um, um, pro-life and also pro-planet. So I just kind of wanted to talk about that with you just a little bit. Um, I'm concerned about climate change. I'm concerned that the vast majority of um, scientists in the world feel that it's almost too late for us to start doing anything about climate change. And this administration has... um, advocated volunteer efforts, but not any mandatory um, calls for greenhouse gas emissions or curtailing, um, um, well, just just creating creating better, mm-hmm. more efficient automobiles. Okay, well, let's talk about global warming. Senator Brownback, go ahead. And, you know, interestingly, some evangelical churches have now signed on to combating global warming as well, the idea that this is the planet that God expects us to take care of. Go ahead. Uh, I was visiting with a gentleman last night that would fit that description, was advocating the, uh, the very thing. I think we have to take uh, the CO2 issues very seriously. And you look at the science of it, clearly we've got global warming that's taking place. The climate is warming. Clearly you have a CO2 loading that's taking place in the carbon atmosphere. Dioxide. Yeah, carbon dioxide that's loading in the atmosphere. It's getting it. I, the, the models, it appears like, are, are I mean, they're, they've got a, a range that they project. Uh, of what happens, but under any scenario, I think what, it would be very prudent for us and the right thing to do to reduce the CO2 loading in the atmosphere. So how do you do that? How would Sam Brownback, the president, support I think, doing that? I think Beverly's going at the right point here. Do you regulate it? Do you do cap-and-trade type system, or do you try to just incentivize in a marketplace? I believe free people properly, mark, properly motivated are the way that you answer a problem like this. Uh, so I want to incentivize a marketplace to do this. But I, I hope she doesn't hear that saying, well, okay, then you're not going to do anything. No, that's not the case. Yeah, is that getting people off the hook? I put in bills, bipartisan bills. I will push them aggressively as president to get more electricity involved in the car fleet. Uh, you'll see the first wave of cars out in two years, maybe a year, that you plug in. Do the first 20 to 30 miles off of electricity rather than off of gasoline. Uh, that will reduce the CO2 loading taking place uh, in the atmosphere, and we put forward tax credits for a person to buy it and for a company to make them uh, as well. I think you also got to see more nuclear power generation taking place, more wind taking place, more ethanol, particularly cellulosic ethanol, the grass-to-gas type of concepts that you're seeing now coming out onto the marketplace uh, as well. And then another one, and this is a bit of a different one for most people, I think we should use tax credits to incentivize the replanting of major forests. I've been in Brazil in the Atlantic rainforest region. Nature Conservancy is buying back with U.S. corporate sponsors major tracts of land and letting it go back to trees. A tree is a big carbon sink. We need a lot more of them. We love that here in New Hampshire because we've got tons of trees, second most forested state in the nation, I think. Yeah, in my state, we appreciate trees one at a time. You know, we just don't get many (laughs) of them in my state, but I want to see a lot more of them. One more question following up on Beverly, though, uh, Senator Brownback. You talked about incentives. As you know, some people would rather see strict regulations. I remember covering uh, a press conference when Bill Clinton was president. This is when I was still working in D.C., It was Bill Clinton and the big three automakers. So how far back is that? At least 10 or 12 years. No, more like 12 or 14. And they were all saying, okay, we're announcing incentives. We're all going to, you know, create better gas mileage and so forth, and we're going to do this. We're going to create the cars of the future. That was at least 13 or 14 years ago. Nothing has happened. The question is, are incentives really enough? Well, but, Given the scope of this giant problem that we could face. I, I would contend that some things have happened and that now you've got a shift in public opinion and in markets. We've got two hybrid cars in my family. Uh, beautiful technology. really matters how you drive it. I mean, I can get 40-plus out of uh, uh, one of ours, and my 17-year-old daughter does mid-30s on it. Uh, so, I mean, it matters how you drive it. But those things are really coming on the marketplace. And what if we incentivized with a tax credit somebody to be able to buy a plug-in car. How many would you sell around New Hampshire? I mean, people would buy these things, and they're buying them now. Look at the Prius, and how many of those have sold? I think you've got a fundamental shift in how the public views this issue and where they're willing to put their dollars. And one more question or 